We begin today with Just Jordan and his two friends whose names I forget. They're sitting around and wondering what girls talk about. I can tell you what they're not talking about and it's these dweebs. The frailest of the bunch decides to go up and holler at one of the girls with the common hat on. He ends up blurbing out nose bubbles which is childish. They're snot feeling that. Now the one with the large cranium puts on his basketball jersey and goes up to spit game. What's up ladies? Tony from the basketball team. His name is Tony. Tony's game is phony and now his ass is lonely. They throw a rock at him, but that doesn't explain why his head was already swollen. It looks like these LA girls need a little country charm, so just Jordan hastily goes to the ladies. He bumps into this convict, and I'm not trying to stereotype my man, but he has a tank top as a do-rag, and that's definitely some jail shit. All the girls love thugs, so they come flocking to him, which is every parolee's dream. They ask him if they can get a ride in his car, and he says, nah, but y'all can wash it. This man's name is Crusher. They tell Crusher it's the 21st century, so they're not washing your dirty ass car. But they'll pay to get it washed. Crusher walked in 48 seconds ago, and he's leaving with four girls in a car wash? What a legend. Jordan disassociates just to hate. The lonely brothers are sitting around looking dejected like slinkies. They ask Tangie how to get girls, and she asks if they've ever stopped to think if it's not the girls, it's them. She makes some very valid points. They're a little delusional, so they say she's wrong and we just need to get shit bracket if we want to get women. They get a new wardrobe for their day at Ronald Reagan High. Just Jordan is dressed like if Dub C joined the military. Tony's dressed like he's from Grove Street. The frail one's dressed like every other day, so I'ma let the fact that he wears this to school and not his job as a bank teller be the joke. Next step in being thugs, they need new thug nicknames. Just Jordan is now j Dog. Tony is Casper. The Mexican homie is named Joaquin, and he's gonna go by Osmondo, which is his felon uncle's name. Osmondo definitely has the best name out of this trio. They run into Tangi, and she tells him that triple XLTs don't make you down. You gotta actually get put on if you want these girls. They decide to stage a robbery on the most pathetic person they know, and they're just gonna try it on my boy Osmondo? Not cool. Just commits a strong arm robbery on camera and posts the evidence on the internet for all to see so he's tripping how is this gonna get tony or osmondo any girls they're hustling backwards all the girls love just jordan now and he's smoking with cigarettes they must be dipped in embalming fluid though because just jordan starts disassociating again this girl that's been ducking him for the longest comes up and asks if he wants to be her date to the carnival tony's head looks much smaller now that his hair is held down by this rag so maybe it was just a bowl cut thug jordan comes in the restaurant false flagging in his grand daddy been from the block since the 80s so he g-checks j-dog the police come in with osmondo and jordan realizes his street ways are catching up to him turns out it's joaquin's dad and he knows the video is fake as hell so just jordan is bust jordan he's grounded for a month just jordan gets a call on his sidekick Dwayne wade lx babe edition 3 it's tamika from earlier she's wondering where he is now he's lust jordan so jordan must climb out the window which doesn't have bars so he must live in a good part of la jordan arrives at the carnival and continues to perpetrate a fraud. Back at the restaurant, Jordan's OG, uh, Andrew Bynum face, and his mom are talking about Jordan. He feels she's being too harsh because Jordan's growing up and he's gonna make mistakes. If only she would just trust Jordan. She's going upstairs to talk to him about it. Back at the carnival, Jordan is acting an absolute ass. He's about to snap his legs in this bumper cart. He won a carnival game and he decides to get himself the prize, a uh, angry Donkey Kong not licensed by Nintendo. He even has Tamika feeding him. Right at that moment, Sticky Fingers, G Herbo Cousin, and and Joaquin uncle Osmondo come to Jux Jordan. His mom walks up and saves him from getting jumped on a date, which will guarantee you never get a second date. Turns out Crusher is actually Eugene Jr. Lame ass. Jordan is now on punishment for two months for a parole violation. Tamika is not feeling Jordan, and as soon as he turns around, she dips out. The next day, Jordan is at work, and Tamika walks in and dubs him. Jordan must be dusting dusted because he starts astral projecting with his eyes open for the third time this episode. This dude might have a problem. He tells himself that he ain't talking to her never ever again. She comes back just to tell him. She would never fall for that weak ass game like that again. It's not exciting to be treated badly and she would never let that happen twice. Jordan tries some good guy shtick and she puts a hand on her shoulder and just says no, which is hilarious.